Hello, universe. Everybody out there, I hope this message receives y'all well. In this COVID season, we went to a virtual setup, as you all know. And I'm used to having people in front of me. But keep in mind that teaching and teaching and knowledge is knowledge in whatever form. For those that don't know me, my name is Mr. Kamanzi. Um, I work in the schools in various capacities, doing conflict resolution, doing um, art, and also contract with Arts at Large for these writing processes and teaching children how to make songs and express themselves through verbal communication. Today, um, well, before we get started, let's look at these bags, um, the Arts at Large bags and the contents. Let's go see what's in the bags. All right. We have washable markers. We have Blank books for you to put your magnificent pieces in. And then, of course, we have uh, pencils, erasers, basics, pencil sharpener. For all those who remember the thing called school, which has now become an ancient memory since we're on to the virtual learning, we actually used to write with pens and pencils one time before we used phones. So, and today we're going to get back to that ancient form of writing. But we won't use papyrus or Sanskrit, we're going to use markers. Today, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, I will teach you the art of rhyming from a four bar structure setup, which is the most basic. And obviously, for those that are familiar with poetry, spoken word, and the written raps, um, are very familiar with this. Before I start, I like to play a game, especially with the smaller children, it's very effective. Um, I call it rhyming scrabble, where I basically take a word and then we take out certain letters and then we add another letter and it becomes another word but it all has relevancy within the context of what I'm talking about. So for instance, you can make have a whole sentence of words of rhyme but it will make absolutely no sense. The key is to make rhyme, words that rhyme as well as making sense. And then we can get into all type of things for those artists and people that are more lyrical and the rappers so to speak when they have multiple syllable flows. And we'll explain that too. Y'all following me? All right, not going too fast, am I? All right. First of all, lately we've been living in a world full of hate. That's such an ugly word. So let's start with that word. See, I could take an ugly word like hate. You know that's spelled H-A-T-E. If I take away the H, and y'all take the L, and you wasn't on time, that means that y'all was late. Now for those tripping, if I put the P before the late, and y'all hungry, y'all can get served a plate. See how basic that is? But it made sense. So yes, obviously the words A-T-E, 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 A, and we put you know, different letters in front of them. The same thing we learned when we were in second grade, when they used to have words and say cat and take away the C and put the B, it becomes bat. You take away the B and add the H, it becomes hat. That seems like such a simple elementary lesson. That is the foundation of rhyming. I don't care if you're a great award-winning MC rapper who's traveled across the world or you're a second grader who's writing their first rhyme. It's the same template and we'll do that again <clears throat> this time I would do it faster and you could do it faster and then you would actually not say the last word and the crowd or the students would say the last word so if I was going to do this thing again I would say I could take an ugly word like hate if I take away the H you wasn't on time I put the L before the eight that means you was those tripping and complaining, I could put the P before the late. That means y'all can get served up. And they would say the last word. So y'all get that? Very basic, but the kids love it because it's relatable, it's fun, <clears throat> and it's a very simplistic way to teach a foundation of rhyming structure. Now, <clears throat> when it comes down to rhyming, these are single syllable words. For instance, hate, late, plate, a cat, hat, mat, bat, 
but if you'd like to make it more complex, you may also go to double syllable. For instance, double syllable would be something as a lot of these rappers out here, they hate you, hate you, but I don't understand why they'd ever come to try to underrate you. In fact, we're going to be over here and we're going to tell you what the plate do, but you wasn't on time because you fall from some late news. I'm just freestyling, so hate you, uh, uh, underrate you, degrade you, any of those double syllable, syllable flows. And then you have people, artists, who come with triple syllable flows. I'm gonna give you an example. Here goes one. I'm Kamanzi. See this MC free. For those who don't got their diploma, they might have to get their GED. Other rappers over there keep it round like the sound. DVD. If I pull your card and I eat on a quest, would that be EBT? So those are triple syllable flows. So it can start very basic from single syllable flows to double syllable flows to triple syllable flows. And then you can have a pattern, a mix of all of them. And that's for the creativity and the um, discretion of the writer on how they want to put their words together. And I find it very interesting. And again, I don't want to sound too much like an English teacher, but the less you know about language, whatever language you're rapping in and writing in, the less mastery and less control you'll have it. So a lot of times I hear a lot of rappers who, whether no matter what the content is, whether it's positive, negative, street conscious, whatever, I hear a lot of them with basic syllable flows or basic type of uh, rhyme schemes. And that shows me that they probably didn't do their lessons and their homework that they were supposed to when they were taught grammar, which starts in second grade. So all you second graders, and first graders actually, Listen when they give you those worksheets and complete those worksheets when they give you the word hat and bat and cat and all those words that rhyme with it. It may seem like it's so simple, but when you grasp that concept, you understand the art of rhyming. Now, I'd also like to um, give a shout out or to all the hip hop because hip hop is actually a genre of music that's almost created its own form of word play, hip hop music. Beyond the, the music, beyond the dance, the writing of hip hop, the writing of rhymes and structures, there's no other art form that can actually add elements and mechanics and laws and rules into language. And I'll get that later on in the session. For instance, um, you guys are familiar with homonyms. Well, homonyms are not new, like hair, you know, which I have none, or like a rabbit hair or there or there or uh, um, you know you guys know homonyms words that sound alike spell different but different meanings hip-hop they actually use a whole sentence and can repeat this sentence again and it means something totally different and in fact in homonyms you're taking the same word and you it's spelled different same sound but different meaning Hip hop, you can actually take the same word without even spelling it different and have it have its own meaning. For instance, I'll quote one of my battle lyrics. I've also battled too. Look how I'm dressed. I am the boss and chief of operation. Oh, if I have to dress you in the hospital, look at you. I'll put your boss and chief in operation. So that's two different things said different um, and with different meanings. And again, that's taking a whole sentence. Look how I'm dressed. The boss and chief of operation. If I have to dress you in a hospital, I'll put your boss and chief in operation. So that's hip hop. And that almost added a whole new language law to the English language. And salute to all the rappers because I don't think they understand what they've done for wordplay and we even get a lot of phrases that come from hip hop. So back to this writing thing because it's important you guys got to understand the significance because they say words sound power. Words are very powerful. Words can bring you up, can bring you down. 
and I also instruct people on the art of verbal self-defense through a lyrical form. Some of y'all call that battling, but actually you have to have lyrical words as defense mechanisms because other people's words will seek to break you down. And if you've been in forensics or debate, then you understand that. Now, let's start today into the basic four bar rhyme scheme. For those beginners, the bars, each line is a bar, like a musical note. And the reason why I always start with four, because four is the basics, because you could actually have a two bar setup, actually not a two bar setup, but two bars as well. You can't have one bar because nothing will rhyme with it. So, in fact, let's, uh, let's just turn this all the way over. All right. In fact, let's get a new one. All right. So, I'm going to start this very basic. This is the same technique I use, again, for second graders all the way up to college students. I usually have everyone start by writing something that ends in their name. Now, obviously, since I'm talking to whether it's five of y'all or 500, I don't know all the names out there. So let's actually end with the word name. So you could say, uh, okay, this is basic. Today is Saturday. And... Don't laugh at me, this is very basic, and it's meant to do that, because it's not about what I'm saying, it's about the structure so you can follow along. Today is Saturday, and Kamanzi is my name. Obviously, if your name is Bill, you'd say today is Saturday, and Bill is my name. If your name was Cindy, you'd say today is Saturday, and Cindy is my name. I want you to underline name. In a lot of these classes, sometimes I just say today is Saturday, and my name is Kamanzi. But again, because everyone's not named commands, I'm not going to do that. And I would have the students actually specifically fill in their name. So today is Saturday, Kamanzi is my name. That's bar one. All right? Now, bar two, you know, because this is a rhyme, this is not just a poem, we have to find something, the last word in the end of the sentence of bar two should rhyme with name. Now, someone asked me the other day, do rhymes have to have, do rhymes have to rhyme? I said, yes, otherwise they wouldn't be rhymes. Then they asked me, what about raps? And I said, not necessarily. This is a rhyme scheme, four bar setup. So we're gonna end it with name and we're gonna end it with another bar that rhymes with name, which is bar two. So now we have to decide what we wanna end with name. Now here's what I do sometimes for the kids who are having problems, because a lot of them have names that it's hard to find names to. So this is my little scrap paper. Remember the little scrap paper we always keep to the side? Remember, it's important not to waste paper, y'all. We gotta be ecologically friendly. All right, so name. What are the type of things that rhyme with name? Well, let's go back to the um, procedure we learned in second grade. Okay, let's take away the N and put the G. That's the game. Okay, let's take away the G and put the F. That's fame. Let's take away the F and put the C. That's came. Let's take away the C and put an L. That's lame. And you can keep going. Blame. Flame. All right? Now, there's other words that can rhyme with this that don't end in A and E, such as insane, plain, lame, uh, entertain. Um, ordained, detained, we could keep going. But because I'm keeping this very basic for those who might be beginning rhymers and rappers and writers, I want to keep that AME and knock off the letter, the first letter in that, and add another letter. And we can keep going. Um, what is another one? Tame. And like I said, it's enough right here. All we need to do is find out one of these. So next, we have all these words that rhyme with name. And name is our last word that we rhymed with in bar one. So now, we can decide what we want to put for line two, for bar two. All right? Today is Saturday. Kamandi is my name. 
I'm an arts at large, that's the name of the game. Or I'm an arts at large and I don't do it for fame. Or I stay on I stay in my own lane, I've never been a lane. I'm like a lion in the jungle, I can't be tamed. I'm not the one you should blame. I am on fire like a flame. It could keep going. Again, this is for you to decide what makes the most sense. And some people like to have a play on words. Some people like to use punchlines. But again, that's for the individual writer. I'm just showing you the process. So now, let's say this. Today is Saturday, Kamandi is my name. At 4 o'clock, I don't know if they play or not. At 4 o'clock, I will watch the game. All right, simple, simple enough. You could have said anything, as long as it makes sense. Today is Saturday and Kamanji is my name. At four o'clock, I will watch the game. Now, that's a rhyme. Bar one rhymes with bar two. These are two bars. Now, bar three. Now, here's where you could change it. If you like. You could have this whole four bar scheme or setup, actually scheme is a better word for it, and in words that rhyme with name, game, fame, blame. And for this practice, I'm gonna do it like that. But I'd like to know, after bar two, bar, starting with bar three, you do not have to have bar three rhyme with name and game. You could start a whole different word, but, Whatever word you end in bar three, bar four must rhyme. So I'll give you a practice without writing it down because I want to stick with the A-M-E words. So if I want to start a different rhyme scheme on bar four, I could have said something like, the Bucks will play in the playoffs. And then I, last word being playoffs. Then I'd have to write the word playoffs, underline it like I did over here. And then bar four, I'd have to have a sentence where the last word would rhyme with playoffs. All right? So let's say I wrote something like, uh, what did I say in bar three? I said, uh, the Bucks will make, the Bucks will play in the game and make the playoffs. So whatever I said ends in playoffs. Bar four might say it's COVID season and unfortunately there's been too many layoffs. All right, now, even though these two playoffs, layoffs, don't rhyme with name and game, those are enough to rhyme, that's two bars rhyming together. I can then keep going with layoff, payoff, stay off, break off, which is actually a two syllable flow. I mean, a two syllable um, rhyme. Or I could keep having the whole rhyme scheme end with words that. Rhyme with name, game, fame, lame, blame, all the way down. So, in this one, let's finish the single syllable flow. So again, back to bar one. Today is Saturday and Kamanji is my name. At four o'clock, I will watch the game. If I do good, I accept the blame. Again, I'm just doing these on the fly as far as, you know, what sentence I'm going to write as long as it makes sense. So now we're done with the whole four bars. All right, let's see how it sounds. Today is Saturday and Kumanji is my name. At four o'clock, I will watch the game. If I do good, I accept the blame. Always been a boss and never were lame. Very basic. And again, um, I also encourage the students, once they understand how to rhyme and once they understand the words of rhyme, I encourage them then to try to make the most sense and to have play on words, 
punchlines, to add the little creative spill to it and make it witty, all right? Because no one wants to sit there and for a boring rhyme scheme. You gotta give it the creative juices, but now you understand the process. Line one and two must rhyme together. Line three does not have to rhyme with line two or one, but whatever word you introduce at the end of line three, line four must have a word at the end of that line that rhymes at the end of line three. Y'all get it? Very simple. Last time, line one and two have to rhyme, otherwise it's not a rhyme. Line three and four have to rhyme. Line one, two, three, and four can all rhyme together. But starting from line three, you can introduce a different word at the end of that bar. But just make sure that the last word at the end of bar four rhymes with the end of bar three. And this was basic single syllable flows. Now, let's, uh, let's go with some um, double syllable flows, all right? So let's, uh, in this, let's, we'll start another four bars right here, all right? In fact, we'll say, like a plane, I'm about to take off. Now you have to excuse from my writing for being so uh, sloppy. I never said I was uh, had neat handwriting, but this is like ancient Egyptian hieroglyphics. It looks sloppy, but it actually means something. But actually, they, they writing was a sloppy. That's my writing. I'm just talking. All right, like a plane, I'm about to take off. I'm like the Bucks. I win in the playoffs. Again, take off, playoff. So in this scheme of these four bars. I want everything to rhyme with take off, play off, all right? During COVID. All right, so we got like a plane, I'm about to take off. I'm like the Bucks. I win in the playoffs. During COVID, there's too many layoffs. All right? So take off, playoff, layoff. All right? Then we have one more. And again, I'm just thinking of real quick sentences so y'all can follow along. Obviously, you have more time, then you could add more thought under what you're gonna write for each line. So line one, these are double syllable flows or words. Like a plane, I'm about to take off. I'm like the Bucks, I win in the playoffs. During COVID, there's too many layoffs. I never sold out like the people who were paid off. So if you look at it, off isn't everything, but it's the word before, take off, play off, lay off, paid off. And you make it make sense when in the context of what you write before. Again, since we're doing it so quick, we could have probably had more thought behind each one. But once you do it, understand the writing process and the template, you can plug that in anywhere and basically begin to manipulate your rhyme schemes and rhyme patterns and put two words here before one word over here. Um, even when you add the element of music, it changes it too, because rapping a cappella, which I'm doing now, is different than rapping to a beat. When you rap to a beat, you almost sometimes have to take words out, and I'm gonna um, I'm go over that process too, because that's a little bit different, because sometimes if you write, for instance, we just wrote this, we didn't really have a rhythm in mind, even though everyone has an internal rhythm, Eternal clock. I wasn't keeping track of any type of beat. I was just making sure you guys got the writing process. Now, once I add a beat to it, that changes the whole element. 
and I might have too many words or I might have to scratch certain words. So on paper, it might not look like it makes grammatical sense because I'm taking out words or adding words, but when it's heard back in real time, when you're flowing, it'll make perfect sense because it will go to the beat. Because sometimes, and this happens with a lot of rappers and writers who write before they get the beat, it looks good on paper, but they had too many words. And when you put the beat, you got a line within the timing of the beat to kick in the snare so it's on beat. And they don't do that, so they're either forced to do one or two things. Either they have to totally trash that rhyme, or they have to edit that rhyme and take words out, or sometimes, in certain cases, add words. So, what I would do is, right now I'm just going to put on a beat. And let's go look and see. Um, the difference, right? And we're gonna get to it. You guys, I'm not going too fast for you guys. You guys, you guys following along? Okay, cool. You know, it's a shame that in this COVID, this virtual world, is taking the human element out. So we still got to do everything we can to, you know, uh, maintain our last uh, rare trace of humanism in this virtual computer. Uh, cyborg world I'm joking but I'm very serious too and by the way while we're sitting here I need everyone to work on their immune system too because the best way to prevent COVID which is not even to get it is to strengthen your immune system and you can zinc elderberry vitamin C um, good multivitamins stop eating dairy foods that are heavy mucus producing things because then the COVID or whatever it is um, the mucus crystallizes in the lungs, and then it's hard to breathe even with the breathing machine. So that's just game, because this is part of this lesson too, because if you can't breathe, how can you say these lyrics? It's important, breath control is everything. All right, now let's get to this YouTube so I can find the beat. Let's find the beat, uh, what do we want? Okay. I have probably the worst credit score in all of Canada. Wow, it's but commercial. I just got approved for a new Ford F Okay. Beat. That's burned by Mob Deep. And by the way, I do not own the rights to this music, nor the copyrights. Just the instrumental. All right. So, all right. let me um stop. I'm going to rap this a cappella. Then I'm going to attempt to rap it to the beat exactly as I wrote it. And if it doesn't go to the beat, then it's going to tell me that I need to make a change to make it go to the beat. The day is Saturday and Kamandi is my name. At four o'clock, I will watch the game. If I do good, I accept the blame. Always been a boss and never a lame. Like a plane, I'm about to take off. I'm like the Bucks, I win in the playoffs. During COVID, there's too many layoffs. Never sold out like the people who were paid off. All right? Now, I'm gonna say the same thing to a beat. If it's off beat, then it means I need to do something to make it on beat. Here we go, here we go. Arcelage, one time for your mind. Arcelage, one time for your mind on Saturday. All right, check it. Uh, today is Saturday and Commandi is my name. At four o'clock, I will watch the game. If I do good, I accept the blame. Always been a boss and never will lame. Like a plane, I'm about to take off. I'm like the Bucks, I win in the playoffs. During COVID, there's too many layoffs. Never sold out like the people who were paid off. Actually, that went pretty good. And um, sometimes you'll go good, and all of a sudden you say, wait a minute, that was off beat. You gotta take a word out. Sometimes the words you have to take out is I, I am. Sometimes conjunctions, and, or, but. Even though it makes perfect grammatical sense when written down, sometimes those words, and, or, but, or the pronouns, I, am, she, he, those will throw you off. So sometimes rappers will take those out. Um, to make it flow to the beat. Because again, writing a rhyme and rapping a beat is two different sciences. And I just told you about breath control. Learn to take your breaths after the word, not in between and right before. Because then you start rapping and you sound like, the day is Saturday and come on, name at four o'clock or watch the, sounds like you gasping for air, like you're underwater or something. So breath control and having an even spacing of where you choose to breathe. You have to breathe, the key. The secret, giving you these ancient lyrical rap secrets. I know some of you rappers out there trying to find out what I'm doing, but only the students and the children know. If 
find out a way to mask your breath. You know, everyone's wearing these masks and stuff. All right. Mask your breath so people don't hear your breath. All right? Because it'll sound a lot better. I know when people go to the studio, they have pop guard filters over the microphones so that your words like, especially the consonants, your T's, your P's, your S, your people popping, pop, or tss, 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 that gets heard. So there's certain type of things. That's cool. You can prevent that yourself through breath control. You can have your own filter on your own words, on your own delivery. It just takes a little bit of time, and you have to be willing to do it. That's the difference between those who are average, good, and great. The ones who are great go over the limit and exceed because they're always finding ways to master their craft. So again, let's play this beat again and say this lyric again. And it's about timing and what I'm going to be doing. And for those that have never rapped before, even the simple basic flow, it is an art form to it. Everyone can rap, but everyone won't sound good. Everyone can cook, but you're not going to eat everyone's food, are you? That's my point. <laughs> Alright, here we go. Arts the Lodge in the place to be. You know me. I'm Mr. Come on Z. I say today is Saturday. Come on Z is my name. One, 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 one. Today, 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 today. Chip, 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 chip. Today is Saturday and Come on Z is my name. At four o'clock I will watch the game. If I do good, I accept the blame. Always been a boss and never were lame. Yeah, just like a plane. I'm about to take off. I'm like the Bucks. I win in the playoffs. During COVID, there's too many layoffs. Never sold out like the people who were paid off. And sometimes you could actually come in on a different part of the beat. That's not exactly the right part of the beat, but if you know what you're doing, you could actually give a little call and response or give a little pre-bar or you want to say a lyrical bridge before you even start. And you'll find out those techniques the more you do it. But I want you guys to understand that writing a rhyme is easy, but you got to go back to your basic, basic format of those word games you learned when you was in second grade. Now, some of y'all probably laughing like, wow, I guarantee you, everyone who does that will be a step ahead and a tier higher than everyone who just randomly thinks of stuff that rhymes. It will show you how to structure your thoughts, how to brainstorm, and you could take this same writing process, right, and program it into writing things that have nothing to do with rhymes. Remember, isn't the uh, five paragraph essay still intro, three body paragraphs followed by a conclusion that teaches you the proper um, placing of your thoughts and the progression, introducing the intro, the body paragraphs that support it with the details and the examples, and then reiterating what you said in the intro and the conclusion. Well, the same is fundamentally true of writing rhymes if you want them to be effective, even storytelling rhymes, because this is just a rhyme structure. Then you can get on storytelling rhymes versus just random rhymes that sound good. Some rhymes sound absolutely great to a beat, but they have no substance. And that's probably the problem right now, is that we have, just like there's food and candy that has empty nutrients, that lacks all type of nutritional benefit, that's just like the music. It sounds good, but it's not good. They talk about drugs, they talk about guns, they talk about sex and violence. And for our children, the beat is cool, but the words are not cool. And I hate to sound like the grumpy old rapper, but it's trash. Throw the trash out, because your mind is great. And we have so many thoughts, and there's millions of words we could use without using one cuss word, one derogatory um, phrase, or anything in lyrics. So I don't give a pass to negativity. I understand we all have a different reality, and expression ourselves, but I think words, sound, power are very important. And we live in a society where words are constantly being twisted against us, words are being used. So why don't we use the art and power of persuasion in our language we speak and make it count with positive things? Um, I like to say too, when you make a song, this is just oh, writing bars. Now making a song is different because now you have to have a hook or a course, which actually is what is repeated. Most hooks in rap usually are four bars and you repeat them. So for instance, if this was the hook, and I'm gonna just freestyle the hook because we already have the bars written. So back to the beat now. Y'all following me, y'all with me? And for all those kids, I hope I'm not making it too teachy, but come on, 
We can't be dumb rappers. We have to have substance. Your minds are greater than the computer. Use that great, magnificent mind of yours. Challenge yourself. Expand your vocabulary. Learn about the adjectives. Make it interesting. Make it colorful. The same way if I was to write a story and it was dull and I had no descriptive language, you'd probably fall asleep. But if I add descriptions, I place you there. Some of the greatest storytellers in hip-hop, Biggie, Tupac, Nas, Jay-Z, they can bring the listener there, not just because of their flow and their pattern, which is nice too, which has to do with delivery, but their way to bring those vivid, descriptive words to place you right there in the project hallways, or you lying over somebody who you just saw got shot, or you gave your mama some, uh, some roses or bought her a house and you seen the expression on her face, whatever it is, whatever makes you cry, whatever makes you laugh, whatever touches the emotions of the human soul, can you capture that in words? Now that, I can't teach you. I can teach you the structure. Only your life experiences and the way you capture the emotion and seize the moment and give it back to humanity will be, that's on you. But you can do it because everyone has their own story and you're the editor and the author of your own story. It's called the book of life. So, um, let's get to this a hook. I'm just a hook, right? All right. So it's Saturday. Uh, uh, uh. Here's a hook for art at large. I'm telling everybody with the four bars. You're all kings and queens. You're all stars. In the paint, we got to go hard. Here's the hook for art at large. Tell them right now that you're all stars. In the paint, yeah, we all bars. Right about now, yeah, we go hard. Today is Saturday. Come on, is my name. At four o'clock, I will watch the game. If I do good, I accept the blame. Always been a boss and never been lame. And like a plane, I'm about to take off. I'm like the Bucks, I win in the playoffs. During COVID, there's too many layoffs. Never sold out like the people who were paid off. Then back to the hook. All right, so you get that, and the hook was basically four bars, and I don't even remember what hook I was saying. It was on the spot, something about arts at large, you're all stars, and the paint you go hard. Whatever that was, that was four bars. You would actually repeat that, and that would be your hook. Certain hooks are only four bars. Most of them are four-bar hooks repeated, which means that they're eight bars. So this hook, which was a four-bar hook, said twice, which makes it eight bars, would either go at the beginning of the song, in the middle of the song, and at the end. And then certain songs start with a verse. Certain songs start with the hook. Most verses are anywhere between 12 bars and 16 bars long. So when you hear people say, um, man, spit a 16, that's what they mean. Not a damn M16, a lyrical 16. Spit a 16, that's 16 bars right or 12 bars a lot of r&b songs have 12 bars our reggae music sometimes reggae music has eight bars of the hook and eight bars of the verse and that's a whole different science all right and a lot of times the reggae bars because reggae and dance hall music it's a little bit more harmonic but it's rapping too all right so when you make the hook the hook has to be the most relevant, connecting, draw you in, repeatable, acceptable part of the song that everyone can get. There are songs where the rapper was just so complex that not many people could even say his flow, even his fans and his listeners and supporters. But one thing that they always got was the hook. All great songs have a hook. That's why they call it a hook. It hooks you in and reels you into the song or the chorus. Um, some people have songs where the chorus is sung. Some people have them where they rap them. It doesn't make a difference. The hook is usually going to be about eight bars, and the hook has to be universal because that's the part of the song that you're going to say again, and you're going to be on the radio, and they're going to repeat it, even when they mess up and can't say your lyrics, especially if you're more complex. Now, where was my... Oh. All right. Now, techniques to performing. All right, and sort of this is... Obviously, we have no stage, and the, the best way to um, perform, uh, practice techniques to perform is actually to stand up, play your music, and say your lyrics. 
In fact, I used to travel all across the world. If you want to go to YouTube, type in King Kamanzi, K-I-N-G-K-A-M-O-N-Z-I. Type in something called International Bars. King Kamanzi, International Bars. You'll see me in Kenya. You'll see me in parts of Colombia. You'll see me in um, Scotland, in Paris, in front of the Eiffel Tower, in London. But anyway, I'm basically going to these different places and doing these little freestyles that have to do with the geography I'm, I, I met or the region I met. And in the international bars, I'm connecting with the, the audience, even though they've never been to those places, some of them. And I I've, I've, you know, was blessed to go to a few of those places. I try to bring them in there. It's almost like a little, uh, a little how can I say, national hip hop's National Geographic to tune the person in there and make them feel like they're there. And in those bars, those a cappella, a lot of times I would say little things would have to do with where I was at. All right, so techniques to perform, breath control. Learn to breathe actually from here and sing. Any singing coach knows this science. The same science for singing is the same as rapping. You just gotta do it different. It's displayed and manifest different. But the same breath control, using your diaphragm, your lungs, you're trying to put breaths not as you're saying the word at the end of the word, so everything doesn't sound like you're underwater. Today is Saturday, and come on, D is my name. At four o'clock, I watch. All right, no one wants to hear that. All right, today is Saturday, and come on, D is my name. At four o'clock, I will watch the game. If I do good, I accept the blame. Always been a boss, and never were lame. Now, obviously, I'm breathing, but I try to mask my breathing. Remember, throw the mask on. Throw the mask on your breathing. We don't want to hear that breath too. Especially if y'all don't brush your teeth. All right. Saturday. All right. I love y'all too, humanity. Performing. When you're performing is different. You have to over-exaggerate your moves because you're on the stage now. I know some great rappers, great writers, great MCs, but they're not great at performing because their performance is too, for lack of a better term, boring and stiff. I know some other entertainers who aren't the best rappers or rhymers, but they're performance and their showmanship is A1 because they draw the listener and the viewer and the fan into them, all right? And that's not as easy as y'all think. See, certain things, people have a natural born talent, a natural born ability. Key word, natural, means it wasn't taught. You either have it or you don't. That's why sometimes everyone needs to figure out their lane because sometimes you might not be the best performer, but you might be the best writer. This other guy, your friend over here, is a great people person, great entertainer, but he doesn't have the thought process to put those words together like you. So there comes the, the perfect uh, um, um, bond, the perfect connection right there. Writer, performer. Certain people do both. But if you can write and don't like to perform, if you can perform and don't like to write, well, find you a writer and find you a performer, and the writer can get paid just as much as the performer, if not more, because he'll actually own the publishing rights to that, unless there's a company, which has to do with the music industry. Learn your strength and mine your strength. In other words, your strength is like a natural resource. Whatever it is, learn to mine it, refine it, practice it, uh, use to affect people in a positive way. We live in a society where everyone loves to text, and text these words, all right? Well, words are powerful. How you use words can make and break you. Master the art of verbal self-defense, which means don't let people's words affect you, which you might have to have counter words to counter attack what they're doing, all right? Deeper than even rap. In this lesson, it's important to know that with the four-bar structure, the eight-bar structure, you once you've learned that, you can basically think beyond the box and begin to have your own type of rhyme schemes. And no, this is not the only type of rhyme scheme. This is the basic building block for starters and the foundation for writers. That's why we start with the four. So again, remember bar one in our four bar rhyming scheme. Bar one must rhyme with bar two. Bar three does not have to rhyme with one or two, but bar four and bar three must rhyme together. You get that? All four, three, two, and one can all rhyme together. But it's important that you understand that. And when making lyrics too, whether it's single, whether it's multi-syllable flows, you can change the pattern up. Obviously, there's trap flows. 
and they actually rap faster to a slower beat. There's classic hip hop boom bap flows. It matters not the type of flow. It's still the same template in the writing process. When you're writing, after you've learned the process, then here's where you spice it up at. Here's where you go back and add your descriptive words. So under your adjectives, so now instead of just those rhymes at the end, you're breaking everything down before you even get to the end. So by the time they get to the last word, you've defined it and broke it down. That'll make your lyrics, your songs, your believability, your, um, your relatability, if that's even a word. Remember, this is hip hop. It is a word when I'm here, relatability, relatability. It's a word now, because I said it, and put it in existence. We don't wait for Webster's Dictionary, we are the dictionary. Make these words connect to people. Make people connect to your words. Tupac, funny there was a debate on Tupac and Biggie Smalls. Some people like Tupac, some like Biggie Smalls. I always thought I like, if I was to see their rhymes on paper, I'd probably say Biggie Smalls is a better writer than Tupac. I know people are gonna say, Ray, what you mean? But if I was to hear or give you the opinion or the perception of the listener, the fan, and the person out in the audience, I'd relate more to Tupac as an entertainer. He pulled you in more, he was more relatable, all right? Biggie was iller, Tupac was more realer. Does that make sense to y'all? There's a difference. One is not better than the other. As a writer, as an MC, I like Biggie Smalls. As a artist, performance, I like Tupac. That's the example of the difference. They each had a strength, all right? Lastly, I want you guys to know that as you think, as you speak, and as you write, all these things have to be on the same accord. Sometimes we write, and that's not even what we feel. That, to me, you're losing the process. Capture the moment. I can't teach all that. This is just a rhyming scheme. You have to capture the moment, capture emotions, put it into word form. Once you get into word form, that's the only first part of the battle. Then you have to match it to a beat that can actually bring that out. Because music, again, music is nonverbal. It's music, it has a whole different frequency and travels by waves too. So now you've mastered the, the rhyming part of it. You got that down. Now you gotta match it up to the beat. Does the beat you know, bring forth these emotions so the words can be felt by the listener? And that is, like I said, that seems like it's, such, so it's easy. No, it's not. That's why there's hit records that really aren't hits and there's underground classics that should be hits that they're not, all right? It's all how much you put into the writing process. It's all how much you capture the moment, you capture the essence of it. And this is deeper than hip hop. You could use this for writing speeches. You could use this for writing books, stories, plays, and movies. The writing process does not stop with a rap song. And I always encourage my students, you know, good you wrote a rap song, write a book. Good you wrote a book, write a law, or write a body of work that could influence a law being passed that could help humanity. Write a script for a movie, all right? Once you've got that down, possibilities are endless. This is Mr. Kamanzi with the four bar writing structure, arts at large, tune in for all artists, all right? You could do this at your home, all you need is a pen, a pad, and get down. And let me just say this, because I'm guilty of this too. I got lyrics I wrote on my phone for convenience. Do not always go to your phone writing in, you know, Google or whatever, on Samsung Notes on your I Learn to get that pen, that marker, that pencil, that writing utensil. Learn to get some paper. You have to visually see it. Learn to underline your last word, all right? Do that. The phone can come later for convenience. Master it on this paper, because remember, the first writing was done in sand. Then the first writing was done on paper and parchment and, and then whatever material they had back in the ancient day for papyrus. If it wasn't actually on the, the monuments and the walls of the pyramids, writing goes back thousands of years ago, created in Mama Africa. So all my students do not fear writing. Words sound power. Peace and blessings.